Hi, so this week we are going to talk about something we may have overlooked a bit, which is the paper that we draw on, the paper that our sketchbooks are made out of. Now, when you go to a store, you know, you might choose between drawing paper or watercolor paper, but there's endless variations and endless factors that can actually go into finding the right paper, different reasons to choose papers. And so the question is now that we're going to discuss this week is, how does paper fit into your sketchbook? What is the role of paper? What is the best paper to use? And we're going to go to uh, ask all these questions of one of our uh, uh, original sketchbook school faculty members who began in our first class beginning. Um, that's Roz Stendhal in uh, Minneapolis. She's going to tell us about, about paper and uh, help us to fall even more deeply in love with it. Hi, Roz. Hi, Danny. So tell us about paper. What, what, like what, what should we think about it? Well, I think you should think of it as a tool um, because it is an important component of your art and it will impact how the other tools and media that you bring to your art are finally uh, brought together successfully or not successfully. And so on all of those levels, it's a very, very important factor. And we have so many choices now. Um, one of the things when, when we talked about talking about this, one of the things I wanted to be really careful in saying right at the uh, beginning is that I don't believe there is such a thing as per a perfect paper. And I want to encourage people to not get into that mindset because then they'll spend their whole life you know, looking for that perfect paper instead of using really wonderful papers that we have available. And part of the problem is that even though we have companies like Fabriano who've been in, in business for like 400 years, well, when they started during the, doing the Euro paper, uh, we couldn't get art paper in this country for about six months because their production lines changed. And so things are always going to change and you need to have options. And I just want to encourage people to keep looking and to test periodically to try new things. So how do we go about that? In other words, I go to the art supply store, I look at the sketchbooks that are there, and I kind of find one that fits my budget and is the right size and seems to be described as, you know, for watercolor. How do I go to the next step of really having an opinion about paper? How do I experience it? How do I shop for it? What do I do with it? What form do I get it in? It seems like a whole next step that I'm confused by when I first go into it. Sure, and I think it can be really intimidating, especially if you go to a, sh a store uh, that is uh, really well stocked with paper. Uh, because it can be just overwhelming. So I think you first need to ask yourself, what do I want to do on the paper? And this is true whether you're going to buy a, a commercially made sketchbook or you're going to buy paper and make your own sketchbook. And so when you ask yourself what you are going to do with it, are you going to use dry media like pencils and charcoal and um, things like that? Are you only going to use pen and ink? And what type of ink? Are you going to be using markers? Are you going to be using a dip pen? Are you going to be using acrylic, acrylic inks? Those kinds of questions. And then you say, okay, well, I'm going to be using watercolor and a combination of all the above, so I'm really going to need something that can, you know, take mixed media. And so with those questions in mind, you start to look at the various papers that are on offer and how papers are sized. So sizing is a... Uh, chemical that's uh, introduced into the paper which keeps it from just being a blotter um, keeps everything from seeping through the paper and watercolor papers have probably the most sizing of any group of papers in that they have internal and external sizing and the purpose of the sizing on the watercolor paper is to float the pigments above the surface for longer or just more indefinitely to, to just keep them up there so that they stay transparent and that the light goes through the pigments, hits the paper, bounces back and makes those glowing paintings that we all know and love. So that's one type of sizing. But then you have printmaking papers and they're sized so that when you make an impression on it, the ink will transfer from your plate or your wooden block or whatever it is, your, you know, your, your acetate thing for a monoprint. And it will stay on there and not seep through, but it's not going to allow you to push paint around. So 
uh, by testing some of these papers, you'll be able to see whether it will do what you want to do, but know that each paper is going to have different working capabilities. So while there are a lot of printmaking papers out there that I actually use when I make my journals myself, I, I always tell my students, you know, this is not how you normally paint with watercolor. I've had to adjust my technique to painting on these papers. You can't just push the paint around the same way because printmaking paper wants to suck the the, the painter ink in uh, to, to a greater degree. And so um, I think that one of the best suggestions I could give to people because there are all these variations is to ask other artists what they're using. I have a list of my favorite papers on my blog which I'll give you a link to. Um, it changes uh, periodically. Uh, I think since I wrote that list Strathmore uh, was making a wet illustration, wet media board and I loved the paper so much and I said is it out in sheets, is it out in sheets and, and over the course of time they actually did bring it out in sheets and that's what we know is their uh, 500 series mixed media paper and since it is available in sheets you can make books out of it, you can use it for your regular paintings. Um, but what I would recommend people do is go to the art store after they've done a little bit of research, buy a sheet of uh, one or two of the papers they're interested in trying fold them and tear them or cut them into sheets so that they can make a little pamphlet book and you can get instructions for making a little pamphlet book anywhere and then I would carry that booklet around as your journal I would carry your booklet around for the next three or four days and every time you work with whatever media you're working in that you would normally do in the course of your journaling work in that book on that paper and then take notes write down how does this feel how does this feel compared to the other paper that I normally you know say you're using a commercially bound book uh, from handbook how does this compare to the watercolor paper in handbook how does this compare to the drawing paper in some other book and take notes because your mind is is going to forget these things and over the course of those three or four days you will know having tried all the different media you you like to use and are familiar with you'll know whether you like that paper or not you'll know the things that it can do, you'll know the things that it accepts and you'll be able to judge whether that's a use, useful uh, paper for you. If you aren't interested in making your own books and you just want to use com commercially made journals you can do exactly the same thing. Buy a commercially made journal, test it for an entire weekend, four days and just throw everything at it and see what the paper does for you. You'll know soon enough if it works or doesn't. And then keep in mind that if you're new at journaling and you're new to using some materials that your skills are going to improve and your likes and dislikes are going to change. And so maybe in two years, you know, test a paper that you previously didn't like, test it again and see if what you do now is more amenable to that paper. Or maybe the papers change because that happens too. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to open a Pandora's box of possibilities. But I mean, as you're talking, I'm thinking in a way, paper is like shoes. It's like buying shoes, right? You might have certain shoes for certain conditions. You might have sneakers and you might have boots. You might have different shoes. And the reason that you buy them is partly personal taste and partly what kind of tools they're useful for. But I think what we want to kind of encourage people to do is to realize that this is one more tool. It's one more factor. It's not just the background for what you're drawing on. And that a lot of times some of the issues that you might have with your watercolors not looking as bright as they could be, you know, your pen kind of catching and not drawing as smoothly as you want to be, might not be the, the paintbrush, might not be the paints, might not be the pen, might be the paper. So the changing those variables around might get you closer to what it is you want to do. So, you know, basically that's, that's, that's a way to look at it, a way to choose your options. Go ahead. Yeah, there, there's, one, there's one really important, um, when you're listing all these things about, you know, how the paper is affecting, everybody always talks about, well, this ink, everyone said this ink was wa waterproof and it's not, I've used it on this paper and it's not waterproof, it just totally dissolves. And one of the things that people have to realize is that individual users are going to use a pro project, uh, product slightly differently, but also papers, um, you know, if you're not using it on the same paper as the other person, you might have a different experience if you're using it differently. But papers, and ink may be waterproof, uh, but on some papers, it's not going to be able to have the situation, the conditions that it needs to get to waterproof. And so I think people need to realize that and not just count, discount products and papers because they don't get the same reproducible uh, results that somebody else did. It's, it's more complex than that. 
I think everything that we're talking about is is really a way to enhance and to go deeper with the, with the art that you're making. If you're a beginner, don't feel intimidated by this discussion. You can go out and try any sketchbook and, and get to work. But as you develop more, as you, want to, as you have more ideas in mind, more effects you want to accomplish, more things you've seen in other people's work, including your choice of paper as a factor in what you're doing is a great idea. And you know, as Roz said, I think understanding these basics, and then if you go to a store, from my experience at least, if you go to a store that has a lot of paper, chances are they also have a couple of pretty smart people who work there who can help you to navigate through them. So don't feel intimidated by this. See it as just yet another toy, another thing to play with, another way to make your art better. Yeah, it, it should be fun. And uh, what you're doing is you're expanding your horizons, you're opening up more possibilities to yourself. And it, it, if you take it as not a chore, but it's something that that is really an exploration. You're going to have so much fun with this that you might you might go over the top and just you know experiment a little too much on on too much. So you have to rein yourself back a little bit. But it, it really is a lot of fun, and I encourage people to do it um, to just sort of see what's out there because you don't know where your creativity is going to go unless you keep trying some new things. It's true. All the things that you want to accomplish that you might see other people doing could be a function of their tools. I mean, we, we always say to you, um, you know, it's not the pen, it's not the paper, but there comes a point where that is a factor. You know, I, I don't think there's any magical piece of paper or magical pen that's going to produce great art, but it's going to affect you. It's going to get you in a different direction. And again, think of that shoe metaphor when you're doing it and realize that, you know, it's, gonna, it's just going to make it better because it's designed for a particular purpose and that's what you want to use it for. And, and I think the shoe analogy is really excellent because, like, when I buy hiking boots, the store that I buy hiking boots at has a little ramp and, and then a fake rock, and you actually have to climb and, and, and sort of work your boots on this fake ramp or fake rock and ramp. And I think what's really important to realize is that you can't try a paper once in one 30-minute session or even one hour session and know everything that that paper can do. You actually have to try it out. Uh, with different circumstances and and really see you know what you can throw at it and just as you wouldn't throw away your watercolors after the first time you use them and they don't work you have to keep trying with a, a piece of paper so really over several days if you keep at it I think it's it's a it's a good thing to do and then the other thing is I just want to mention toned papers um, those are papers that come in, they're already colored, the pigment is in the paper, and there's a number of them on the market, some very, very good toned papers. Um, a lot of people like to work with toned papers, but while they're on the market, not a lot of them are made into books, at least not the heavier weight that we like to use you know, for visual journaling typically. And, but there are some heavier weight sheet size papers that are toned. Uh, and I recommend that if you like toned paper that you experiment with some of those because there's an option that you don't get by going in and buying a commercially bound book. So, you know, there, there's, there's some of that to, to this whole discussion also. Right. I mean, there's a, the Swarthmore has, has, um, has brought out, um, Strathmore, I mean, has brought out some books recently that are kind of good, but I think they're, again, when you have more options when you're making it yourself, you know, and you can really vary the color um, you could even have a book that has multiple colors in it. There's all different kinds of things you can do. You know, so keep experimenting, keep trying it out. And also you might find that something isn't right for you today. Next year it could be. You, know, you could discover, discover something new. I keep changing my books. I, I fall in love with one kind of book and I'll use it for a while and then I'll change completely in a new direction. So keep evolving, keep trying different things, different sizes, different shapes, and uh, keep having fun. Thanks again, Roz. You've, taught, you. you've, taught, us, you've taught us a lot today, as you always do. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.